for seconds, I think, Barmic. So, because they just ask people to switch off the uh, their their uh, microphones. There, we there's a break through coming in through the background. There, that's crazy. It might have been background noise for you, Glenn. There. So, anyway, yeah. So we're we're recording this now, and uh, we. We can take uh, pieces out of the presentation uh, as might uh, be uh, required uh, later on. So um, listen, everybody, thanks very much for uh, coming along to this uh, really important uh, event, the uh, annual Moy Materials Scholarship for Architectural Technology and the Associated Architectural Technology Leading Light Lecture. And the origin of this goes back uh, three years when Brian Conroy uh, of Moy Materials approached us to say that Moy were interested in uh, supporting our programme and a particular student in third year uh, with a scholarship to the value of €3,000, in other words, to pay, essentially to pay the fees for uh, for the academic year. And and uh, we welcome this with open arms and uh, we decided at that point in 2020 to uh, initiate the Leading Light Lecture. And in that year, uh, Ryan Dempsey, uh, a recent graduate of the programme, joined us having won the World uh, Skills Gold Medal for BIM. And uh, he uh, presented in the gallery. That was the last opportunity we had for a live presentation before COVID. And last year we were joined by uh, Emma Hayes, a, a graduate and a leader in the digital technology sector uh, and uh, Emma presented by a pre-recorded lecture uh, and we delivered online uh, and that was really welcome that's up on the website and we're joined this year by Andrew Swarbrick uh, our, our, one of our first honours degree uh, graduates going back uh, over 10 years now um, uh, uh, who'll be who'll talk uh, about his career experience and uh, uh, Andrew worked in the UK for many years and has returned more recently and is currently working with Omani Pike Architects where in fact two of the third year students are in placement at the moment so so Andrew will uh, will will give us his um, angle on things, a little reflection on his career to date, and some uh, hopefully uh, inspirational thoughts about uh, the careers that lie ahead for you all. It's a really exciting uh, time for architectural technology and the building uh, environment uh, generally. As people know, things are booming out there, so loads of opportunities. And Andrew might be able to give us uh, some insight. And we're also joined by Glenn Moran from uh, Moy Materials. And uh, so after Andrew's lecture, uh, uh, Glenn will announce the winner of the Moy Materials Scholarship. And we had a number of applicants and uh, we shortlisted that to uh, three applicants. And those people were uh, interviewed yesterday by Moy Materials and uh, uh, Glenn and his colleague Liz McGonigal. I'm not sure if Lynn has been, Liz has been able to join us, but uh, they are uh, they've made a, a decision on the on the the winner and also a highly commended and a commended uh, a candidate. So uh, that that will follow uh, Andrew's uh, lecture. So um, I think uh, that's uh, as much as I might say. Other than I suppose uh, this is the last uh, Moy Material Scholarship of this uh, school of the Dublin School of Architecture because of course we're going through this uh, radical transformation within TU Dublin and by September we'll have a new school uh, and uh, and new colleagues and new students where we're joined by environment and planning and so uh, we look forward next year to having uh, and to continuing with my materials in this scholarship but it'll be uh, under a, under a new school so I suppose it's just to, to mark the moment of the closing stages of the Dublin School of Architecture and looking forward to the future so um, uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen uh, now and uh, which I think I've done and Andrew you should be able to uh, pick up there and maybe thanks Cormac uh, you just dropped off there but uh, just at the very end but um, I hope you can all hear me good good uh, sounds exciting uh, the, the changes that are happening to you Dublin so um, yeah all, all the best with the transition next year that's that's really exciting to hear um, I'm just going to try my best to share my screen. Um, if you just give me one second. I should probably be good at this now. After, after living at home in a pandemic, but 
Here we go. Um, can you share, see my screen there? Yeah, that's perfect. We can see that. Cool. Um, I'm Andrew Swarbrick. I'm a chartered member of the Chartered Institute of Architectural Technologists, CIAT. Um, I'd like to thank TU Dublin for the invitation to present today as part of the Leading Light Lecture Series in advance of the presentation of the Moy Materials Scholarship for Architectural Technology. Um, it's really great to see Moy Materials continued and increased support of students. It's a really great initiative. I remember that the award that I actually received in my third year of studies from Brian Conroy. And I now also directly benefit from the scholarship as I spent the last year working with the first recipient who is now forging her career at Amadney Pike Architects. And as Cormac mentioned, there are two third year interns who have recently been introduced to. And I'm also working with a recent graduate as well on a current project. So the future is bright, uh, more of that later. Um, but to Glenn and Moy Materials, I can verify that your investment in architectural technologist is a really worthy initiative. So please, please keep it up. Um, I hope that some of my words today will resonate to some of you as you progress through the early stages of your career, or maybe calm some of the emotions or overwhelm as you navigate through your, stu your current studies. As I look back, I realise why there's such a heavy workload, such a huge amount of information to digest and dissect. The architectural technologist profession can be so vast on the one hand, but on the other, be very exacting and precise. I listened to the recent president of CIAT, Eddie Weir, speak about what is an architectural technologist. Eddie said that an architectural technologist is the Swiss army knife of architecture. So I do have a Swiss army knife and that picture was quite dangerous to take. So I put the tools away and uh, because there was a health and safety issue, uh, which is a lesson in itself. But as I look at my Swiss Army knife, I can relate to what Eddie was saying. There is a huge array of tools. Some are specialist for a specific task, while others can be used to complete multiple tasks. I've also found that some can be used not as intended, but still get the desired results. Some, excuse me, are my go-to tools that I use regularly. I have confidence in them, I've mastered. Others I've not used yet, but I know they are there if the situation arises. My career as an architectural technologist has never stopped moving forward since I graduated. I am learning from project to project and ever honing my skills and understanding of the tools of our profession. I'll talk a little bit about my career progression. It has been 12 years since I graduated. In 2010, Ireland was going through a recession so I jumped at the chance to get work when offered a job in the UK. I've heard Cormac speak about the importance of getting work, not rushing and taking your time over the initial years of your career to find your feet and explore different avenues of the profession. This is really good advice. Be patient, don't rush, but put in the effort and get experience. My career to date has been spent in architectural practices two years in Brooks Architects and then six years in PRP. Both of these were based in the UK. Both of these played a pivotal role in my career development. At Brooks Architects, I saw drawings that I worked on turn into something real coming out of the ground. It was here that I built up confidence to pick up the phone and build skills in communication, write and answer emails, stand on site and talk to contractors and subcontractors. And to relate this back to my materials, it was at Brooks Architects, talking on the phone to technical departments of product suppliers and systems that I re realized the value of, of um, the knowledge that these people have and you can build a relationship with them. I've learned so much talking to product and system suppliers, technical people. I've also used Brian Conroy as a sounding board if alternative products are being suggested. In PRP, I worked on larger scale buildings and different sectors. It was here that I began learning about construction contracts, speaking to clients and coordinating design information between primary design consultants. I also achieved my charter membership at CIAT. 
this was a natural progression for me and one of the technical directors at the time supported me as I worked through my professional assessment. For me, achieving chartered status gave me confidence by demonstrating my understanding of my experience to date amongst my peers. It reinforced my belief that I found something I really liked doing. Then life changed a bit and I moved back here to Ireland. I spent two years working at CNW O'Brien Architects, who also have a very strong connection with TU Dublin. This experience put me right back in the Irish construction industry, and I found it really interesting to compare my UK experience with how things were done in Ireland. I now work at Amahni Pike Architects, where I'm at the early stages of forging a career working in the residential sector to a scale which I've never experienced. A few things have stood out to me as I look back on past projects. Hand sketching is a skill. Keep trying. You don't need to be an artist, but as a communication tool and a way to understand details, it is a priceless skill to have. Get to sight. For me, a really, really important part of my career development was getting to sight to see how things are built and talk to the people that are looking at your drawings because our drawings are printed at some point and interpreted by contractors. There is a skill that was formed when I studied about clarity of information. Make it readable so when it is printed on site, the A1 drawings are pulled out on a site table with coffee cups. The information can be interrogated and site issues can be resolved effectively. As I noted earlier, I graduated during a recession. This steered my career in a, direct, in a direction. But my current thoughts have been impacted by the Grenfell Tower fire in the UK, the mica and pyrite scandal here in Ireland, and the building defects of the Celtic Tiger era, of which this apartment that I'm sitting in is directly affected. These things make me pay attention to detailing and specifications. How information is coordinated and described in our models and documentation, are we creating difficulty for passive fire protection systems to be installed on site by the way in which our designs are developed? How are we ensuring high standards on site and that our buildings are safe? The world is moving through and hopefully towards the end of a pandemic. This has accelerated digital communications and collaboration. It has impacted our working lives. We're all waking up each day to read about the horrific humanitarian crisis unfolding in the Ukraine. What support can we give the people of Ukraine? The geopolitical landscape is being rewritten. The climate crisis is not going to disappear by itself. Will renewable technologies and their implementation pull us back from the brink? But I mention these things not as something bad, but that you could and I think will play a part in the solutions. So my final bit of advice is to have an awareness of world events. But for now, put all of your energy fully into your studies, and I have every confidence that you'll be equipped with the tools to adapt and excel upon graduation. I'd like to thank you all for listening, and I wish you all the best with your continued studies and completion of the architectural technology degree. So I'll hand you back over to Glenn. Watch Andrew. How's the audio? The audio, audio okay? Yep. Thumbs up. And so, just if you want to jump in, Cormac, or yeah, just to, to, uh, to as as a kind of a handover there. Anderson, Thanks so much, yeah. uh, Andrew. It's it's fantastic to see the work that you're doing there, and uh, and I'm sure there's many of our students now will be excited to know that so much uh, lies out there by way of opportunity and you made the very valid point that uh, the technologist is a kind of a linchpin in the conversation with product suppliers and manufacturers and drills into the detail of what those uh, professionals do and uh, becomes a, a, a connection uh, in industry and indeed it's that role that uh, Moy Materials identified a number of years ago as something that they uh, wish to sponsor and in, in, in having a, a Moy scholar each year, Brian Conroy said that they looked forward to building up over a generation uh, people that they could talk to 
directly in practices, knowing that these people would be uh, leaders um, out in practice. And I suppose just to follow on on your uh, observations about uh, about the, those global issues that are facing us, I, I, I do remember asking you 12, 12, probably 15 years ago, what your hobbies were, and you were unusual in that you said one of your hobbies was current affairs. So I can see that it's very much, um, you know, at the heart of what you do. And it is important to have that global view, not to get uh, buried in the detail of your work. Technologists are fantastic for detail, but the important thing is to keep that global view. So thank you so much for uh, for, for for all that you've uh, presented there. So I'll hand it over to uh, Glenn now, to who will be able to give us a, a, some reflection on the scholarship process and uh, and Julie announced the, uh, the, the, the the winning student. Excellent. Thanks very much, Cormac. And uh, just first of all, say thank you to Andrew and uh, obviously Cormac for the opportunity again this year, um, uh, building on the foundation both himself and, and Brian have built um, um, uh, a few years ago and obviously highlighting uh, the fact that the, the continued support uh, from Moy uh, with TU and its its uh, new branding next year as it uh, uh, transitions um, in, in many ways. But uh, again, at Moy are delighted to be involved um, and this year, uh, no different to any other year, was exceptionally difficult when it came to um, the assessment and uh, scrutiny of the submittal work and, and applications from, from the students. But again, um, from my perspective, it gives a real insight and, and a flavour for the passion and, and enthusiasm um, that the students have for uh, design in general, um, uh, but again for the, the upcoming trends uh, uh, within the marketplace as well. And something that Andrew hit on uh, during his presentation as well, which is is always uh, very refreshing, is is to see that kind of eye pop moment on a site where an architect or an architect uh, architectural technologist can see their drawings come to life exactly as as they uh, they had designed. So again, for us, um, it gives that all round um, um, uh, kind of overview of of the situation, and again that it that. Um, uh, first hand feedback from the guys as well, which which is immense. So again, from all the candidates down to the shortlisted candidates and, and obviously the uh, the interviews um, uh, yesterday as well, it has been an exceptionally difficult um, uh, process. And I suppose uh, own to that a uh, fact, we have uh, uh, ch uh, changed it up slightly this year in, in the fact that we have actually awarded prizes to um, uh, uh, the three guys. Um, so away from what would what had been done previous years, um, uh, we would um, uh, first of all um, um, I'd like to uh, announce the winner. And I think I'll, I'll not bite my tongue any longer. If Cormac is happy, I'll I'll jump in there and, and announce it. So uh, Niall Bork is um, uh, the overall winner and will receive the bursary prize from uh, Moy Materials. And uh, a huge congratulations there um, uh, to Niall. Um, but in in addition to I suppose the the, the striking work and and uh, submittal information he had um, um, uh, put forward, um, the interview yesterday with him was um, a, a real eye opener in in respect to um, his drive, um, his ambition, and and where he sees his his career path and ro role um, uh, going and it, uh, as time proceeds. So um, in addition to that, um, the other two uh, shortlisted candidates were uh, so exceptional in, in this year's application that we, um, well, I say we, Liz has to take more credit for this than, than I do, Cormac, to be fair. Um, she has actually extended the, the, the prize to um, uh, cover uh, a second place to uh, Paul Kennedy, um, who again will receive a bursary prize of 500 euros. Um, uh, again, uh, through uh, academic merit and all the various other um, categories we 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 scrutinised the the applicants under um, again uh, uh, Paul's uh, submittal and and interview yesterday was was exceptional to the point that uh, uh, Liz managed to uh, get the powers to be at Moy to dig a little bit deeper into their uh, pockets and uh, um, uh, come up with something more there. But again, uh, this is a strength in what we're trying to do uh, uh, overall. 
So um, it, it, again, uh, to be even shortlisted in 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 this event was was an exceptional um, uh, 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 opportunity for 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 a lot of people. So um, in in third position we have Killian, who uh, again um, through um, the submittal information and and everything else we would have seen from yesterday, um, really impressed as well to the point that we we have an additional uh, bursary of two hundred and fifty euros for uh, Killian as well. So um, overall, as as uh, both Andrew and Cormac have have highlighted, a lot of of you guys would be familiar with Moy. Um, if you haven't come across as yet, you probably will through your professional life um, or or through your student life, as you may have already. Um, but in any uh, case, uh, at any point throughout your career, you need to reach out or or would leak, um, as as Andrew said, need someone to bounce something off. Um, we're always there, and and the door is open with regards to that. But we'd like just to to congratulate everyone that, um, uh, that participated, and um, a, a real um, a thumbs up and and a hundred percent appreciation to everyone, but uh, especially the three winners. So thanks again to everyone involved. That's great. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Glenn. That uh, that that was great, and and congratulations to to to, to Niall, a worthy winner, and of course to Paul and and uh, and and Killian. And uh, I'll be working with my colleague uh, Jill O'Lone, who's also here, uh, who's from the TU Dublin Foundation, uh, to issue a, a certificate. So uh, there will be a winning certificate, and then a certificate for highly commended and commended. And so these are important things for CVs uh, uh, down the line, I guess. I would myself refer to the odd prize that uh, I won in my time as my in my time as a student, uh, and it remains meaningful to me all these years uh, later. So it is an important uh, thing. And just to say, uh, Glenn, that uh, we, we've already agreed that uh, uh, my materials will come in um, in the first semester Absolutely. of the coming academic year for an in-house presentation in the gallery, where you'll launch uh, next year's uh, my uh, scholarship, and then we'll have. Uh, another event uh, in semester two along these lines where we'll announce the winner and have another leading light uh, uh, person um, uh, presenting. I had hoped that um, that, that Mitchell Carroll, our, uh, our scholar from last year, might have been able to uh, join us. I don't see him there on the on the on the the list. Uh, although he did kindly make a very nice little video uh, that I will uh, upload on the news feature that you can have a look at as well. Just a reflection on his achievement. And I think Andrew, you referred to. Um, uh, uh, the previous winner, who was um, having a, a senior moment, as they say, Sersha Goff. Uh, of course. Yeah. Cheryl, so Sersha was the the original, uh, the first winner, if you like, and, a, and an exceptional student. It's great uh, to hear now that she's landed on her her feet, and so in effect, she's the first kind of you could say Moy ambassador, uh, and she'll learn well uh, in Omahani Pike now uh, going forward. So listen, this is this is great. It's a great event. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Glenn. It's so important to have these industry connections and thanks to all the students who applied and the students who have turned up today and I can see some of my academic colleagues there as well. Thanks everybody for uh, for, 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 for coming along and um, we have this uh, event recorded and we might take little pieces out of it and uh, and, 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 and share it more uh, generally. So listen I think that's that's it and um, uh, thanks again everybody and uh, so we'll uh, we'll wrap it up and um, I just wish you all the very best and and then we'll see you next year and Andrew we'll see you probably sooner than that. Perfect. Awesome. Thanks for everything Thanks. Cormac. Cheers. Thanks guys. Have a good Cheers, day. Then. Cheers Cormac. Bye bye. Bye bye.